Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and on today's hashtag 50 gone by 2024, we're going to discuss something that's called how to naturally lose weight fast. Does that really happen? Don't think so. All right, medical disclaimer. Always check with your physician before starting any exercise program or diet regimen. Information here is my personal research into different health topics and is not to be considered health or medical advice. I'm just the person in the cogwheel. All right, while there are endless diet supplements and meal replacement plans claiming to ensure rapid weight loss, most lack any scientific evidence. There are, however, some strategies backed by science that do have an impact on weight management, and those strategies include exercising the big E, keeping track of calorie intake, intermittent fasting, and reducing the number of carbohydrates in the diet. Science-backed ways to lose weight. They tell you to try intermittent fasting. It is a pattern of eating that involves regular short-term fast and consuming meals within a shorter time period during the day. You can choose to do it first thing in the morning, middle of your day to evening, from a certain point of evening until the morning when you break your fast. Some have indicated that short-term intermittent fasting, which is up to 24 weeks in duration, leads to weight loss in overweight individuals. The most common intermittent fasting methods include alternate day fasting, fast every other day and eat a typical meal typical diet on non-fasting days. The modified version is eating just 25 to 30 percent of your body's energy needs on fasting days. So you're not totally fasting 100 percent. Some of us fast for other reasons. The 5-2 diet. Fast on two out of every seven days. On fasting days eat 500 to 600 calories only which is about two McDonald's hamburgers. I think that comes at 624 calories. The 16-8. Fast for 16 hours and eat only during an 8-hour window. For most people, the 8-hour window will be from around noon to 8 p.m. A study has shown that this method has been found that eating during this restricted period resulted in the participants consuming fewer calories and losing weight. But as always, it's best to adopt a healthy eating pattern and on non-fasting days and to avoid overeating. Tracking your diet and exercise. I cannot stress how important this is. If someone wants to lose weight, they need to be aware of what they eat and drink each day. The most effective way to do this is to log those items in a journal or an online food tracker. Um, researchers have said that there are 3.7 billion health app downloads today, and I'm sure there's more by now. Research suggests that tracking diet, physical activity, and weight loss progress on the go can be an effective way of managing your weight. Um, one study found that consistent tracking of physical activity helped with weight loss. Meanwhile, a review study found a positive correlation between weight loss and the frequency of monitoring food intake and exercise. Even a device as simple as a pedometer can be a useful weight loss tool. We're going to come to this again. Eating mindfully. Mindful eating is a practice where people pay attention to how and where they eat food. This practice can enable people to enjoy the food that they eat and maintain a healthy weight. As most people lead busy lives, they often tend to eat quickly on the run, in the car, working at their desk, or watching TV. As a result, many people are barely aware of the food that they are eating. Techniques for mindful eating include 
sitting down to eat, preferably at a table. Pay attention to the food and enjoy the experience. Make it special. Light candles. You know, put some mood, some soft music on while you're eating. Avoid distractions while eating. Do not turn on the TV, laptop, or your phone. Put your phone away. Put it away. Eat slowly. Take time to chew and savor the food. This technique helps with weight loss as it gives your brain enough time to recognize the signals that it's full, which can help to prevent overeating. Making considered food choices. Choose foods that are full of nourishing nutrients and those that will satisfy for hours rather than minutes. And I, I always come to this. Everybody always teases about Chinese food. That with all the rice, you're hungry just a few hours later. And I've always found that true, but I think that's the rice. That's me. So, be careful and mindful of what you're eating. Take it slow. Relax. Don't have distractions while you're eating. Eating protein for breakfast. Protein can regulate your appetite hormones to help you feel full. This is mostly due to a decrease, decrease in the hunger hormone ghrelin and a rise in the satiety hormones peptides YYGLP-1 and cholecystokinin. Young adults have also demonstrated that the hormonal effects of eating a high protein breakfast can last for hours several hours. Good choices for high protein breakfast include eggs, oats, nut and seed butters, quinoa porridge, sardines, and chia seed pudding. Although I would not consider sardines breakfast food. But that's me. I don't like sardines. <laughs> Cutting back on sugar and refined carbohydrates. Our Western diet is increasingly high in added sugars, which has a definite link to obesity. Almost every food that's manufactured has sugar, or the what they call the tri-salt, tri-sugar fecta, that has a combination that makes you want to eat more. Um, and that is even in beverages that we drink, you know, rather than food. Refined carbohydrates are heavily processed foods that no longer contain fiber or other nutrients. These include white rice, bread, and pasta. These foods are quick to digest and they convert to glucose rapidly. Excess glucose enters the blood and provokes the hormone insulin, which promotes fat storage in the adipose tissues. This contributes to weight gain. Where possible, people should swap processed, sugary foods for more healthful options. Good food swaps include whole grain rice, bread, and pasta instead of the white versions, fruit, nuts, seeds instead of high sugar snacks, herb teas, fruit infused water instead of high sugar sodas, smoothies with water or milk instead of fruit juice, eating plenty of fiber, dietary fiber, describes plant-based carbohydrates that are impossible to digest in the small intestine, unlike sugar and starch. Eating plenty of the fiber in the diet can increase the feeling of fullness, potentially leading to weight loss. Fiber-rich foods include whole grain breakfast cereals, whole wheat pasta, whole grain bread, oats, barley and rye, fruit and vegetables, peas, beans and pulses, nuts and seeds, this next one's very important. Balancing the gut bacteria. One emerging area of research is focusing on the role of bacteria in the gut on weight management. So you need to really pay attention to this one. Probiotics are your friends. The human gut hosts a vast number and variety of microorganisms, including around 37 trillion bacteria. Every individual has different varieties and amounts of bacteria in their gut. Some types can increase the amount of energy the person harvests from food, leading to fat deposition and weight gain. Some foods can increase the good 
the number of good bacteria in the gut, including a wide variety of plants. Increasing the number of fruits, vegetables, and grains in the diet will result in an increased fiber uptake and a more diverse set of gut bacteria. People should try to ensure that vegetables and other plant-based foods comprise 75% of their meal. Fermented foods, these enhance the function of good bacteria while inhibiting the growth of bad bacteria. Sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, Yogurt, tempa, and miso all contain good amounts of probiotics, which help to increase good bacteria. Research have studied kimchi widely, and a study result shows it has anti-obesity effects. Similarly, studies have shown that kefir may help to promote weight loss in overweight women. Probiotic foods, these stimulate the growth and activity of some of the good bacteria that aid weight control. Probiotic fiber occurs in many fruits and vegetables, especially chicory root, artichoke, onion, garlic, asparagus, leeks, banana, and avocado. It's also in grains such as oats and barley. And as always, getting a good night's sleep. Numerous studies have shown that getting fewer than five to six hours of sleep per night is associated with an increased in incidence of obesity, that insufficient or poor quality sleep slows down the process in which the body converts calories to energy called metabolism. When metabolism is less effective, the body may be storing unused energy as fat. In addition, poor sleep can increase the production of insulin and cortisol, which also promote fat storage. How long someone sleeps also affects the regulation of the appetite-controlling hormones leptin and ghrelin. Leptin sends signals of fullness to the brain. Manage your stress levels. Stress triggers the release of hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol, which initially decrease the appetite as part of the body's fight or flight response. However, when people are under constant stress, cortisol can remain in the bloodstream for longer, which will increase their appetite and potentially lead them to eating more. Cortisol signals the need to replenish the body's nutritional stores from the preferred source of fuel, which is carbohydrate. It's easy to break down. Insulin then transports the sugar from carbohydrates from the blood to the muscles and brain. If the individual does not use this sugar in fight or flight, the body will store it as fat. That implementing an eight-week stress management intervention program has resulted in significant reduction of body mass of children and adolescents who are overweight or have obesity. Some methods of managing stress include yoga, meditation, tai chi, breathing and relaxation techniques, spending some time outdoors, for example, walking or gardening. Here's the takeaway. It is important to remember that there are no quick fixes when it comes to weight loss. It is best to manage weight loss. The best way to manage weight loss is to eat a nutritious, balanced diet which should include, and I disagree with this, 10 portions of fruit and vegetables, good quality protein and whole grains. It is also beneficial to exercise for at least 30 minutes every day. And that is it for today's hashtag 50 gone in 20, 20, 50 pounds gone in 2024. All right, got a little tongue tied there. All right, I'll see you again next week. Everybody have a great week. Stay on it. Drink your water. Get the exercise. By all means, if you're able to, get outside and do the exercise. You'll feel better. Breathe in some of that deep, beautiful oxygen we have. See you guys again soon. Bye.